Okay. So in our Thanksgiving festivals, or what people call ceremonies, and they're not religious things, they're, they're really acknowledgments um, of the, the bounty of creation, essentially. And what will we do in those? We have, we have specific parts of those ceremonies that, that go back from times that we had essentially lost our way. And we have three, but actually four specific parts of our ceremonies that... Whoa, that whoa, I'm sorry. When you say lost our way, what do you actually... Uh, and I'll, I'll explain that. Okay. We have four parts of our, four specific um, elements of our ceremonies that we do that track back to a time that we, f we were f fighting amongst ourselves and we had unified and we'd come together. So when I say lost our, lost our way, that's what I'm talking about. We had periods of time that we, that we had infighting, that we had uh, factionalism overtook us, and, um, and, and, we, we br were, and we brought ourselves back together through different means. But s the s parts of those ceremonies represent those periods of times that we had grown apart and come back together. The last time that we acknowledge in our ceremony, in our, in our, in our festivals, is what people call the uh, uh, when the the Haudenosaunee and the, the the person they call the peacemaker or the Gondwida unified the five nations. Tuscarora will join later to be the sixth nation, but unified the five nations. And that period of time, it took to to end that fighting took took some you know took years you know probably a decade. And when, when we tell the story, it doesn't always sound like it's it's that long a period of time. But after that. We had a period of peace and prosperity because we were no longer fighting with each other. And we placed a much higher uh, importance, priority on peace. And this may have predisposed us to being vulnerable when we began to be encountered with, with Europeans because our first... Well, I just we, have didn't, to, have, we I, didn't have the fight or flight. Well, well, John, know. I don't mean to interrupt. But, well, I do mean to interrupt yeah. you, but I'm just saying I just need, a, as I say, a ballpark figure of this period of peace. This period of peace, and again, a lot of times, and this is part of the the, the trouble with um, with understanding our oral tradition versus what people now view as you know as accurate history. There are some that would try to suggest that that um, our final. Um, consolidation, if you will, our final uh, unification took place not around the same period of time that uh, you know that, that Columbus, you know, in the in the fifteenth or sixteenth century. That's not the way it's told to me. The way it's told to me is that this is is much farther into uh, in, into our past, and that we had a period of peace that that developed that that existed for for over a hundred years. Okay, and and that. In that hundred years, what we know, what people call the Iroquois, or we call the Haudenosaunee, or uh, we, we expanded our influence and how we used a certain amount of what we call peace, power, and righteousness to um, influence other, uh, other peoples who are not necessarily of the five nations. So we, we spread our influence about how to maintain peace. And, and it wasn't through weakness, and it wasn't through pure, you know, docileness, so to speak, but it was in a manner that did not place a high enough priority on, on having the ability to defend yourselves and to, uh, uh, in, a, in, the, in the larger way that would have been necessary for us to, to handle the European invasion for all intents and purposes. Yeah. So we could say about, about roughly about three generations of peace? Oh, uh, yeah, w w yeah, in fact, in fact, it was probably more than three generations that uh, of peace and prosperity that, that came uh, that, that our people enjoyed um, after this, after that last unification of uh, of our people. The reason why I want to put say say let's just make a, make it like make it last five generations of peace. Yeah. That's enough. <coughs> excuse me. That's enough to seep into your lineage, if you will. That's right. enough to seep, so that you know at least two 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 to three generations didn't know war. Or didn't know conflict. I was going to say what didn't know conflict, and I, I guess that's what that's what you're talking about. Well, and exactly, <laughs> and and the idea of um, encountering a people that were so much different than us. Our first um, uh, efforts were to to forge peace. That's why 
you know, in all the accounts, including when Columbus first makes it, uh, uh, is greeted by the Arawak in the, on, in the Caribbean islands, he remarks at, at a people that were so uh, generous and so kind and so giving. Because that wasn't the European. The Europeans have been in a constant state of conflict for, you know, for, for thousands of years. And we had, we had been able to put that level of, uh, of conflict being a constant part of life in terms of that kind of violent conflict. Um, we had been able to put that uh, behind us. And we were somewhat ill-prepared for the, for the level of, uh, of atrocity that, um, that people could, could muster up even as they were, they were double dealing and talking out of two sides of the face. Mm -hmm. I was at a, a, a lecture one time uh, from uh, the Canadian, um, um, I don't want to say NATO, you know, a toxinous person, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Jamaica high, high, um, high Water, High Water, High Tower. Anyway, he said that, he, he was an artist, and he said that uh, when you see a picture of Columbus and, and I'm getting off the Nina Pinta Santa Maria, you always see them in the full thing, you know, all polished, I don't know. That. But he said what they actually looked like was like, like all ragged and everything like that. They, they, the natives thought that they had they had squirrels on their faces and stuff like that. Oh, and so the smell and the smell was mm -hmm. absolutely horrendous. I mean, you know, one of the things that that is always uh, talked about, um, you know, from from the you know that oral tradition was uh, how could people carry that level of smell <laughs> because you know they they looked at us like what was wrong with us that we bathed so much. Mm -hmm. They not so much. <laughs> well, the reason why I bring that up is because I'm thinking that the kindness may have been out of, I don't want to say pity, but out of just hu humanity, I yeah. suppose, you know. Well, one of our words that, that has come to mean white people um, is derived from this notion that we're describing a people who have not fully developed. And it's not to say that they're you know, mentally handicapped or that, or that they're, it's more like they're children that they haven't you know, they had just haven't learned yet. I mean, and so, as much as they tried to, you know, um, you know, promote themselves as a, as a superior being, many of our people looked at them and, and, and thought these people are just they just don't know yet. They're just undeveloped. Well, was, wasn't that central to Russell Means' thesis about uh, for uh, for America to live, uh, the um, for the world to live, the European must die, something like that? When he was talking about. Uh, the five uh, races in the world, and the the, the, the I'm not yeah. saying that the, I'm not saying I'm just saying this is what it, his theory was that that, that the, for lack of a, I don't want to say white race, but the European race is just the youngest, and so they act you know, they yeah, like exactly. like a young child. They, they they haven't reached you know, and, and it's funny because they want to claim you know if you follow the what people consider the the, the studies of the humanities, right? They they like they want to say it's the Greek Roman European trajectory, but the reality is. Our people looked at, uh, at Europeans as a people who would not, ha did not have a sense for, for what humanity really was and, and, and what was the role of humanity within the, the greater context of, uh, of the rest of creation. And not that we are the lords and masters of, uh, of the planet. And that's almost most of the, the three dominant religions of Abraham, you know, all you know, ca seem to like cast man as the you know God on earth and you know lords of the uh, lords of the universe and and that's not the way most I indigenous people, only Ongu people, would um, would view things. We we understood our relationship with creation n as an active partner with uh, with with not just the the animal kingdom but the, the uh, much of the other dynamic parts of creation and. We would not be arrogant enough to. In fact, when we do our ceremonies, when we do our Thanksgivings, that's what we 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 try to maintain a certain level of um, uh, humility when it comes to our relationship with the rest of creation. Thanks, John. Sure.